Many times with Google it feels like you're at an exam because you work so hard on your project and it's so long till you know if it works, what the results will be, if you will see any success with your site. In this video here I want to dive into some data across four different niches, four different websites that I built recently. And I had 20 articles published in the first 30 days. So I want to emphasize here, we're talking about the first 20 articles on a brand new site. So of course, things change later down the line when we have more links to the site, more authority. But this is the first 20 articles when you have no authority, no links to the site, nothing going on, just from scratch registering a brand new domain. So let's look at the numbers here. I pulled the numbers into Excel here and you'll recognize a few of the sites and there are also a couple of sites that I will not reveal. So down here you'll see article 1 to 20 and you'll see the number of page views over here. So the first one here got 1800 page views, the second article landed at 180 page views and I should say this is after a while. I looked at this after a year so all these four sites here had at least a year to rank. And we can get back to how long time it takes to rank. I think on average for these four sites here, it was between seven and 11 months. But the most interesting thing here to me is how wildly it varies. You see one article here getting 2300 page views. And remember, these are the first 20 articles on the brand new site. So the average number of page views I got across the first 20 articles I published on Sewing Machine Talk here was 717. Let's have a look at a few of these winners on Sewing Machine Talk, the three articles that got the most traffic out of the first 20 articles. So this one here got 1800 page views per month and it still does pretty well. How much electricity does a sewing machine use? Nobody had written anything about this when I was writing this article. I could only dive into Quora, Reddit, forums and these type of sites. So I was able to stitch all this data here together and I also had a good look at a few sewing machines here on, in our house. Maria has been sewing for many years doing wedding dresses and stuff. So I was able to actually also look up some real numbers. And you can see here how I could take my own pictures of her machine and show exactly how much electricity they use and how to figure it out and what's the difference between different machines and so on. So that was a pretty good article here. We can have a look at the outline using a sewing machine on boats and RVs. So I was trying to figure out what people were looking for because if you're in your home, it doesn't really matter how much power it's using. It makes sense if you are out on the road and you have limited power like on a boat in an RV. So this was obviously something people would wonder about. So you need to think about when or why would people look for this? How to choose the correct adapter. That could be another reason why people wanted to figure out how much power it needs. So I wanted to address that as well. And what about volts and other numbers? So I was diving into as much numbers as possible and I've been trying here to really get into the head of the searcher and figure out why on earth would you search for this? The other article that got 1800 page views was this one here. The eight best sewing machine brands and four you should avoid. And normally I would never touch a topic like this. I mean, normally something like the best brands would be super competitive, but for some reason, nobody had written this article. And this is a great topic because there's just so much commercial intent. I mean, people are looking for brands here. They're totally on buying mode. So you will see an article like this do well with ads. And also, of course, you can link to these brands and so on. And if we look at the table of content here, I just go over some of the major brands, why they're good. And then I finish off by adding a few brands that people should stay away from. And that's to give this main title up here a little more edge because when you see this, the best sewing machine brands and four you should avoid. You would want to know what those four are, right? And make sure that this is not the one that you're looking at to buy. So the winner on this site, this article here got 2,500 page views per month after it had a little time to rank. That's just crazy. Sewing machine bobbin problems. So the bobbin is this part of the thread that comes up from underneath and attached to the top thread. I don't know if you know anything about sewing. I surely didn't before I wrote this article here. But um, I just go over reasons why and I go over each case and see if I can sort of solve it for people. And of course I consulted with Maria because she knows everything about sewing. And nobody had solutions to these issues here online. And I tried to get the best 
advice at the top so people would quickly see what the problem could be. And this article still does very well. So let's look at another site. This is a completely different niche, much more competitive, and you'll also see lower numbers here. I had a very lucky first hit here with 660 page views on average per month. And then most of the other articles were sitting at around 150, up to 300 page views per month. So the average monthly page view here after it had time to rank after around a year was only 164. And this is because this was a way more competitive niche. So for most of the topics I chose for the site that I wrote on, there would be existing articles. They were not truly what we call underserved topics. Somebody else wrote those articles first and I had to do a better job. And that just takes more time in Google. And also you will have more misses because you have zero authority. So that's why it's so important to go for underserved topics in the beginning. You see the difference here if you get a few hundred or a seven or eight hundred hundred page views and that can make a huge difference on your motivation of course also on the income side of things but this side number two here is in a very competitive niche as I told you so I wanted to break into it and I was all right with it taking more time and more effort to break in because I know that payout with ads and affiliate will be huge on this side so I'm okay with it but I would never recommend this to a beginner you need to start somewhere where you can find these underserved topics if it's a new site because it'll be very demotivating to see the growth that I saw with this site if this is your first time around. Let's look at site number three. Here we had some pretty good winners. This article here saw 3000 page views. This one here was at 2500 and the average here was 788. Pretty close to what I normally see with a new site. And the last one is one you recognize. It's good old animal how that I sold a while back and the new owner was so kind to let me dive into analytics because I didn't have these data stored. Um, so the first 20 articles after a year got this many page views, around 791 page views on average. So if we look again across the articles here, you'll see some had very little traffic. Now we're back on sewing machine talk here. You look at the next one here, there are a few here that are completely misses. I mean, they got no traffic. This one here had zero traffic. So there are some winners and some losers and we have to look at average numbers. That's very important with a brand new site. So if we take out this site that's in a competitive niche and we look at the numbers again on average across these three other sites, I had around 760 page views on average for the first 20 articles on the site. And remember again, this is the very first article. So down the road, we should expect more page views because as we publish article number 21 and 50 and 100 and 200, some of these articles will already rank in Google and attract links and give us traffic and show Google that we know what we're talking about. We will have established some topical relevance in Google. So they know exactly what the site is about. They see that people tend to stay on the site because we have great content. So now that Google trusts us more, that average page number should go up. And that fits perfectly with my numbers across my sites. But also remember, even though you might think you're dealing with a very competitive niche, maybe the other players in this field don't have the keyword research or the topic research methods that you have available. If they don't know about the Google autocomplete and the people also ask and the different methods that we use for finding these underserved topics, they might not be able to find these little gold nuggets that we dive up with these techniques. And that's why I spend so much time on the topic research for the first 20, 30, 40 articles because I really want to nail them hard and find topics where nobody has written anything about it because then the site will always take off much quicker. I also want to quickly say that these four sites that I showed you here, they're not test sites. These are sites where I use all of my best strategies to get the best results. I also have a lot of test sites where I test Google and you've seen me talk about many different things that I test in Google to see if we can find some new clever ways to get more traffic faster that pays better for our time and our money invested. So if you want to get my strategies and know how I build these sites, of course, you can always join my course. You'll find a link to it here and in the description. So let's talk a bit about what happened after these 20 articles. So these articles that we looked at here, the first 20 articles, after around a year, most of them would flatline on the traffic. They would not 
continue to climb in Google and get more and more traffic. They would land around these six, seven, eight hundred page views per month. But a few of these articles would get more traffic in the long run. And those are the articles that you need to get back to and see if you can do more with them. And of course, you also should look at the articles with the most traffic and see if you can make them even better. So go into analytics and go into ESOIC, into the big data analytics there and see if you can find articles with more potential and look at what's working because you need to continue in the direction of these articles that did well. So we saw how a few of these articles across my new sites was getting 1500, 2000, one article was getting 3000 page views, even though it was a brand new site. And when you have an article like that, you totally need to figure out what's going on and see if you can find more topics like that. If you can dive deeper into that and really just carve out your niche in that direction. I hope these numbers were helpful. I'll see you guys in the next video.